So I'm here with Randy Zuckerberg, who uh, is the, in charge of marketing at Facebook and ran all the political campaigns, uh, most interesting in the United States, uh, with the Obama campaign. Quick summary, uh, Obama and McCain, what, what did Facebook do with that campaign? Great, well, and you're going to be camera. taking it internationally. So first, what, what did you do? Sure. In so for the past year and a half, I was very focused on uh, Facebook's election and political strategy. And we worked very closely. Uh, Facebook is nonpartisan, so we worked equally with both Obama and McCain's campaign as the election grew closer. Um, Obama's fan page has almost 4 million fans on it, which has doubled since election day. And um, we actually did a great partnership with CNN around the inauguration, where if you went on to CNN.com, you could log in through Facebook connect and update your status and see what your friends were thinking right there without even being on Facebook. So a lot of exciting things we've done and uh, So you're going to take this internet if looking for internationally what are the things that you could be doing if you're a, are you going to do this internationally you've just done this in the yeah. US for now. Well absolutely so I think one thing that we saw is how powerful it is when politicians really engage with people uh, on social media and we saw I think I don't think it's enough anymore to have an election where a politician just gives a top down message, you really have to engage with your constituents and make them feel like they are a part of the political process. And I think what we've learned from the U.S. election is really highly leverageable in any country around the world. Uh, Israel's having an election coming up, Germany, European Union. I think it's going to be really important for politicians in all of these areas and all of these countries to connect deeper with politicians. So has any, have any of these countries been in touch with you? Uh, we actually have been talking to a lot of people. Um, we have uh, many international politicians are already on Facebook. Uh, President Sarkozy is uh, one of the most popular international figures with 60,000 fans on his okay. Facebook profile. 60,000 compared to 4 million for Obama. Well, Obama is a very special case. He's a <laughs> global president. Okay, uh, okay so Sarkozy, Sar who else, who else are in popular international politicians? Uh, President of Italy is very popular. Yeah. A lot of uh, Israeli politicians. Um, Netanyahu has a very popular Facebook page. Um, uh, we have a lot of politicians all over the world. But does Facebook get involved in helping the politicians? So we, Facebook as a company, does not endorse any politicians, sure. but we are thrilled to work with any politician or campaign that wants to leverage the tools of Facebook. So we're always happy if a politician or their staff reaches out to us and uh, wants to discuss best practices or wants to discuss um, the best ways to, to portray information. So that would mean not, not uh, just knowing how to use the, the, the platform. What, what, are, what are your top tips for a politician looking to use Facebook? Sure. So my first one is just to really be authentic. Um, for example, you know, Obama would, for every video that he posted about his policies, he also would post videos of, you know, eating hot dogs on the campaign trail. Um, people love that post regularly, it's not enough to just post you know, once every couple of weeks and expect people to remain engaged. Post new information every day, send updates, and also to provide viral tools, give people incentives to encourage their friends to be your fan also. You're always going to reach your most die-hard fans, even if it's on your website. So tools like Facebook enable you to reach the friends of your die-hard fans also and grow your uh, support base even more. Okay, just one final example of how Facebook was used during the election. We just had to continue the conversation. Yeah. Describe what happened with the Iowa caucuses. Absolutely. So I really had this incredible eureka moment, um, and it was right around the time of the Iowa caucus. Traditionally, um, participation, especially among the youth demographic, is not as high in the Iowa caucus as it could be. And we saw Rock the Vote doing some great initiatives around getting uh, the youth to go out and take part. So Yeah, Rock the Vote has been working very exactly. hard. But um, so what we did was we put a message at the top of newsfeed to uh, people in Iowa aged 17 to 24 for on uh, the day of the Iowa caucus. It was a completely nonpartisan message. It just said it's very important that you take part and participate in the Iowa caucus today. And what we found, the numbers, that participation, that demo, was up somewhere between 2,500 to 3,000 percent over the uh, And in absolute numbers, this meant how many people turned up more? Uh, you know, I mean, Iowa is a smaller not a state, state, so, you know, that's tens of thousands of people. That's not, you know, hundreds or millions. But tens um, of thousands of people more turned up? Mm -hmm. Tens of thousands of more people in that demo turned up. Than so, they would have. Yeah, so that was a really fascinating moment to me when I saw that data because it just really showed what an impact social media and the internet can make in 
um, and really inspiring people to go out and vote, to get more educated. And this is all just off of a simple message on the news feed, go out. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, one other thing we saw that was interesting was on election day, we did something pretty simple. And that was also at the top of news feed. It said, um, please go out to vote. And then when you're done, press this little button that says, I voted. And there was a, a ticker on the top of everyone's newsfeed in the United States. And as more people around the country voted, the ticker went up. And you could see it climbing, you know, from a million to two million, three million. Also in your newsfeed, you would see 85 of your friends just voted, or 100 of your friends just voted. And that really makes it, you know, it's not just. So this is that you're bringing the network effect back in, which exactly. is so I've, I'm feeling sort of pressured. 35 of my friends have voted, and right. I haven't. I, do you want to be the only person that's not voting? And so this, what we really did, I think, was we made voting, which is traditionally something very private, into something that's very social, and made it um, an activity where it's your friends telling you to vote, not just a, a third-party site telling you to or vote. Or an authority figure exactly, saying, go vote, you, know, you need to. You hear it everywhere. You know, there was a million uh, PSAs and telling you to go vote, but it's really, I think, a lot more impactful when you see that 100 of your friends just went to the polls. And how many people clicked that? Do you remember uh, how many people? Yeah, it was five and a half million people. Five clicked. and a half million. How many people? on Facebook in the United States? Um, you know, we have, I'm not sure the exact numbers because we have 150 million worldwide and so, but I, I would say that that is like a significant percentage of the U.S. population that's on Facebook. Right, right, right. So. Okay. Two concrete examples. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.